Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bahrain Now. With me, your host, Bara Abdallah. We've got a great show coming up featuring great local talents, initiatives, and happenings from around the kingdom. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to finding the clear path to your business and checking all those boxes, that can get a bit intimidating. And that's why this local initiative is joining us here today to talk about how you can unlock your best potential and guide you throughout the way. Winning the Jitex Future Stars Awards for Best International and Scale-Up Startups and Holon IQ's Top 50 Mina at Tech Startups 2021, we're joined by Ahmed Faraj and Mahmoud Malik from Alumni Corporation to talk to us some more about this unique initiative that we all want to know about today. So good evening, gentlemen. How are you? We're good doing evening. well. A very good evening. So thank you so much, first of all, for uh, again inviting us into this uh, again amazing show. Thank you. I'm excited. Thank well, you for having us. Definitely, most definitely. So now I love the name Lumify. Lumify. Yeah. <laughs> so what is Lumify? So basically Lumify, it's a B2B learning platform. Mm. So the entire idea, we wanted to bring the alignment between the business objective with the required skill sets. Okay. So we created that, so we call it a learning experience platform slash competency-based platform. Mm. So to bring that direction within the organization where it helps them to accelerate their capability building. So the platform entirely focuses on four core pillars where we right. help organization to map the competencies, where we develop a prerequisite competency framework to help them to map those competencies to towards every job role wow. and department. From there, we help them to assess their gaps by using our assessment tool matrix, which is the talent assessment. Okay. So they can use a, a psychometric assessment, cognitive mm -hmm. assessment, technical assessment, aptitude assessment. Can, they can utilize this assess pillar for their entire talent acquisition for training and analysis, wow. career progression, on board, onboarding, recruitment, and it goes on. Then the third pillar is about the learn direction. Okay. This is where we created a micro learning library, bilingual, mm. Arabic and English, Ooh, wow. where they can develop different type of learning path for their employees to fill the gaps or to hit their objectives. Learn how to learn. Exactly. Amazing. So, and of course, uh, the, the, we created a platform that can aggregate different contents from different content providers through, uh, you, you can name it, we just partnered with one of the biggest um, uh, content providers worldwide, which is Open Sesame. So they have more oh than 23,000 content across all industries. They are huge. Yeah. They are huge. Yeah. And uh, there is a lot of features. I think Mahmoud, basically Mahmoud, he really tackles the entire experience of the business, of the platform right. and the client uh, acquisition and direction. So I, I believe Mahmoud can also add a, a lot on that. Uh, I mean, we customize their experience based on their needs to mm. personalize it further and further and to build this emotional and social connection with them to stick around learning as much as we can mm. and hook them to learn what they need to learn wow. to yeah. develop gradually in their careers it's it's amazing what i'm hearing here right now because like you know in different let's say governmental agencies awesome. and private companies they spend an entire year yep. going and interviewing and putting down an entire training plan yep. right. for a year to year right. and then pretty much they try to pretty much work on that and you know wait for the budget to happen yep. wait for this wait for that and it takes a lot of effort and time yes absolutely so let me just share that with you so there's a statistic stated that approximately around 80 percent of the training budget are wasted. That's big. That's big. That's a lot. It's big. So this is where the concept of understanding your company direction, mapping the specific or specifically mapping the required competencies and skill sets where you have a clear object. So th th wow. an additional direction, <laughs> wow. it will help the individuals or the learners or the employees of mm -hmm. the organization to really understand where they are heading. So we are bringing that visuality within their career path. Wow. Which, again, another statistic 
I think it was uh, issued by LinkedIn, okay. they stated more than 94% of millennials and Generation Z, they leave their jobs. Yes. And the biggest reason, they don't have a clarity where they are heading. No. So this is what we are trying to solve as a, solve as a problem in the market with Lumify platform. 94%. Yeah. 94%, yes. That's a huge percentage. It's almost 100, that's it. Absolutely. And top it up. Yes, yep, yep, yep. So it's, 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 again, I mean, as been pretty much involved in the training field for such a long time and seeing what's happening here as it's one thing just to bring that training course and make yep. it so glamorous, yeah. you need this and all yeah. that. Yeah. But then when it goes to the company and we, you know, for a governmental agency, and then you just want to see how can that be applied. So I'm assuming pretty much you're doing an amazing job with Lumify here. Mm -hmm. We hope so. And we are and trying. We're trying our level best. And there's a lot of algorithm involved. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. AI taking absolutely, place. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things that it's we, where we are building it currently within the right. platform. The recommendation system will be yeah. more even evolved around recommending uh, learning items, um, recommending um, some sort of additional feedback sessions mm. Mm. or actions that the employees need to take to further develop in some bits right. that they need to right. be developed that's at. That's amazing. Yeah. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. I, I love that, you know, pretty much you being in Bibon as well, <laughs> yeah. and I'm seeing you over here, it, it's a great big deal. It's like, you Thank guys, you. I need your autograph. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go for that. And, and, you know, people need to know, like, yes, applications, and there's a lot of work going behind the scenes, but I'm sure a lot of obstacles and challenges mm. took okay. place, especially yeah, in a world that's so radical, so fast paced. Yeah. At the same time, it's so never ending changing, but at the same time, at some points, never wants to change. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you got a bit of both. So how are you tackling all of this? So basically, I, I believe we are facing different obstacles in different levels. Um, and this is something, it's, it's a, on a continuous, continuous, uh, okay, sort of, uh, again, things that we are always with. And we know that every scale or every level of the business, we have different challenges that we need to face. But let me share something with you. It might be very interesting. Um, we really started this business in 2020, July, with full belief where we invested whatever we have, every single penny of our money wow. into this business in the middle or in the beginning of the pandemic itself. So it was, mm. yeah. here's the hit. Yeah, yeah. It was really, I mean, we really. But we are driven by our purpose. Purpose, absolutely. Uh, whatever professional background we came from, yeah. and we saw the need in the market, it matches our values, where we are seeing ourselves. So it all makes sense to start this. And we are enjoying the journey. Well, it shows, yeah. it really yeah. shows. We are. We, we really are enjoying are the journey. Very passionate about it. That's what why the challenges that are and still will be, we are seeing it as opportunities to grow. Right. And this is the mindset we are even trying to build in our culture. I mean, we started in Bahrain um, with a couple of uh, companies over here. Then we had a company in Abu Dhabi. Then mm. We grow into Saudi Arabia, mm. then we grow into Kuwait. So it's happening, inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah, 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 definitely. Yeah. We're super proud to see this happening. As right now, having this interview, having this talk, and a few years later, going back to this interview, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it, Lomify <laughs> right now is international. <laughs> the fact is that right now we have a program that can actually set the competencies, the goals, and yep. then there is the materials. Like, Absolutely. oh, what you need to learn. So no, it's there. Yep. It's, it's there. ready. Yep. Click, click, start learning. Absolutely. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah. So what's the future like? Um, so, please, Mahmoud, I think. Well, I think the product will be evolved more and more to match the local, regional, and inshallah, global needs uh, from both uh, user experience, the learning materials we have uh, on the platform, and even our direction where we are heading, where what's the potential of this product to go. So. Wow. I need the sky is the limit, Absolutely. as they yes. say. Yes. You need today. I think I, I, mean, I have 99.9 percent. I'm sure of this statement. <laughs> um, we have the biggest Arabic library in the world. Corporate learning content. 
And I love it that she dropped that statement right here on our show. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be pretty much the clickbait. <laughs> 99%. <laughs> but da -da -da, it's Arbicon, the biggest in the world. Yay, Lumafa. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I mean, if you're going to leave us right now with a few words and advice to other startups okay. to have what you're having right now with your passion, your resilience, and pretty much your ongoing motivation, what would you advise us right now to upcoming startups companies here in Bahrain? Um, we have always heard that uh, this state, this statement that never give up. Um, we had sleepless nights. Um, talking on all aspects, we had our again downs and ups. What we really tried to do is to continue. It was about, uh, uh, we were always talking about that. I was t telling the guys, we started with four core people, with Mahmoud and I, Mahmoud uh, Rawini and Safa. And I was telling them where we are heading and where we will reach, it's like the sun to us. How wow. we are, yeah. Wow. We were wow. like, this is the, that type of belief we really had. I swear to God, we, we really didn't know if we are hitting our next milestone or no. Or does the cash that we have will, and the cash flow that we have will give us that momentum of taking the business further or no. We had zero clue on that. But faith, believe, and um, ah, Mahmoud. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is what kept us. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to just to give another note where I want to share something on Mahmoud as, himself as well. I swear to God, while we started, we received offers from maybe top tier companies okay. to join their team. Amazing. With a massive salary, very strong salary. Right. We did it. We really believe in what we wanted. Held to your baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mahmoud. Uh, well, actually, I encourage uh, Bahrainis and founders to join us in this journey. Yeah. Mm. But I need to even give them this um, advice per se that's not please. for everyone please uh, uh, there would be challenges there would be uh, tireless uh, nights that you have to be alone uh, right. it's the belief what drives you to go get up the next morning to do whatever you you are loving to do powerful powerful so, yep Absolutely. well gentlemen Thank you so much for okay. this amazing talk. And we know right now pretty much, it just puts a smile on my face and everybody watching this interview that we got amazing thank people you. like yourself out there to change only Bahrain, but even the world. Thank you. So Happy. thank you so much for being with us right here on Bahrain. It's been Thanks. a great honor. Thanks to you. Thank thanks you. The honor is ours. Thanks for giving thanks. us this platform and opportunity. Most Happy. definitely, thank most you. definitely. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, these were the team members of Lumify. Took place right here on Bahrain now with this amazing talk as they kept going for all the way till they're going to reach the international levels. All that took place right here in interview on Bahrain now. Ladies and gentlemen, they are at it again. The students of the Arabian Gulf University, AGU, has launched a national awareness campaign for rare diseases, which aims to increase the awareness about rare diseases patients, their needs for medical and social support and help and tolerance. And to speak more about that, we have here with us is the AGU medical students, Sarah Janahi and Abdul Aziz al -Anizi. Well, good evening. How are you? Good evening. We are great. Thank you, first of all, for having us on this great evening. Definitely, definitely. And thank you for this amazing campaign, as this is going to bring a lot of awareness and could actually save lives. So tell us more about the campaign, Abdelaziz. So Rare Disease Day is a part of uh, a campaign like uh, an international cooperative movement that mm. goes all around the world. Mm. And it takes place every year during February. Okay. And uh, the aim of this campaign is uh, to raise awareness for uh, rare disease uh, patients mm. to have them like an equal uh, social life and have them like a, like a, 
uh, an early diagnosis or right. to make them reach to an early diagnosis and give them the access to health care center. Okay, yeah. so this uh, rare disease, uh, they like have, tech, have been initiated in 2008 in Europe, okay, mm. and have been uh, like Bahrain have joined lately in 2013. Mm. And uh, that was initiated in Al Johara Molecular Medicine Center right. with the Arabian Gulf University by our leader, Dr. Christina, which is like a, a medical genesist uh, consultant, mm. which we send her our greetings from uh, this lovely interview. Thank and uh, to our uh, part of our, our colleagues from uh, RD, uh, RDD uh, group. Mm -hmm. Also, we had like our, uh, our campaign lastly in the 25th and 26th of February, mm. like in the past uh, weekend in uh, Seaf Mall. And like uh, we had like a lot of people uh, visiting all around, like uh, all, all over the society. Amazing. So, okay. And uh, also like rare disease, uh, disorders like is a bit different than that no, a uh, bit different than normal disorders right so it could affect any age groups mm. with a variety of symptoms so we always like uh, until nowadays like we have more than 7000 rare disorders have been uh, registered around wow. the world wow and uh, most of these diseases like until now so far like 80 percent of these diseases like have been due to a genetic cause so reaching out to like a, a specialist in, in a genetic uh, field would really help in early diagnosis and management and treatment. Amazing. So that would be our aim of this uh, uh, campaign. Beautifully said. Thank you so much. You're as, as definitely like in a case of rare diseases, a lot of people don't even know what's going on. So as they go there and they see the awareness and they get to have an eye-opening moment, like, this could be anybody in our lives. So doing that campaign, that, like we said earlier, it could save a lot of lives. So thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. And now as for AGU itself, like, you know, they've been there for the medical field as, as long as we remember with all the amazing researches and campaigns. So tell us about the support of AGU. And so first of all, I would like to thank Bahrain International TV for having us today. It is such an honor to be here with you. You're most welcome. And uh, regarding the question, Arabian Gulf University and Al Johara Center are fully dedicated to provide uh, not only high uh, quality medical education, research, and diagnostic services, but also they have a great responsibility in raising awareness in the society. So uh, all the Rare Disease Day campaigns that we had are financed by the university. And we have uh, full support from uh, our uh, president, Dr. Khalid al mm. uh, and, and the medical dean, uh, and the uh, Jawhar Ahad, uh, and the, uh, like, uh, they the always support center. us. Yeah, yes. all the supporters, definitely. Wow, it's a lot. It's, it's a teamwork. It's like a huge, like, unity between everybody, society and the university and the Jawhar Center all coming together to help bring this great awareness to everybody. Like, like a lot of people lost their, their parents, their fathers, their friends to rare diseases because they were not early diagnosed. This is, like, this is very important to have. So now as the AGU took a great deal in supporting the field, what about the stu students' uh, interactivity and their involvement? Tell me more about that. Uh, first of all, we had a wide uh, social media campaign. So we posted a lot of, uh, about uh, rare diseases and how uh, patients would like the society to view them like they want to integrate in the society more and uh, to be accepted. Mm. Uh, so that was about social media. And we wanted to uh, give the next generation a lot uh, of ideas about mm. uh, these rare, uh, rare patients. Mm. That's why we went to schools and uh, gave them some lectures about uh, rare diseases. Wow. And uh, we also organized a competition, an essay competition, mm. uh, uh, to write uh, their feelings toward uh, these patients and how right. they can support them. Uh, because this will allow it's them to, to search more and uh, to have more ideas about uh, these patients. And uh, um, beside that, we had a big event in Seif Mall on 25th and 26th of February. Uh, in which we explained for the visitors a lot about the rare diseases and uh, some uh, causes and uh, therapies that are available now. So uh, we really liked the, uh, the society uh, feedback because uh, they were curious to know more. Mm. 
mm. and they would uh, wanted to help. Amazing, amazing. And now you got the students, you got the AGU right now, you got the Johar Center. How was the people's interaction? How was that going on with the campaign? Uh, they were really interactive and they were curious to know more about this and also we have received many essays from the schools mm. so kids were interactive and they uh, like to to read and uh, uh, like uh, write m their feelings more amazing amazing well thank you so much Sarah for your efforts and every member of the team now to you Abdul Aziz um, as patients right that they wouldn't know much about their I would say case what advice would you give them so like uh, rare disease patients uh, they would face like or they would struggle a lot so they won't uh, fail or they won't get the proper uh, diagnosis at the beginning mm. so they will face improper treatment and that uh, trouble will go uh, around uh, their life mm. so this, uh, they will reach to a point where they think that there is nothing or no, no more could be done. But uh, like, uh, actually, this, this, thing, this thought is uh, totally wrong. Hmm. Because we always say that there is much to be done right. and they should not, uh, they should not uh, give up. Because uh, that's our campaign or main campaign of, uh, of, our, uh, of our awareness is to enlighten people about uh, the diagnostic hmm. tools, about the treatment, about the management. So there's always hope for these people. Amazing. So also that uh, these people with rare diseases, they, they, would, they should always seek for the specialists. So as we mentioned already that this, uh, these diseases like are uh, caused mainly due to a genetic cause. So they would seek to like a genet uh, geneticist who is specialized in this field, who should uh, take like a proper uh, diagnostic tools. Mm. As we have a say in medicine, that uh, half of the treatment is a proper diagnosis. Right. So if you have a proper diagnosis, you get a proper treatment. So that's the key for it. And you could also like we have like there is a rare, uh, rare day uh, support team that you could mm. get uh, benefit out of their ex uh, experience and uh, uh, expertise of, uh, of them. Amazing, amazing. If I would get a little bit personal with you right now. So my dad, um, God rest his soul, he was a pharmacologist, a doctor in pharmacology. But what happened as the diagnosis he had, he didn't know exactly what happened to him first. He lost the ability to talk, not knowing he had a rare disease called ALS. So when he passed away, he passed away because we did not get the diagnosis in the beginning. So I'm sure if he was alive today, he would thank you personally for all the amazing efforts you've been doing right now to pretty much spread the awareness of rare diseases. So thank you so much You're to welcome. every member mm -hmm. of your team for making this happen, AGU at Johara Center and everybody else. And we will support you all the way to make sure this happens more and more often. So thank you so much. Any last words to your viewers? Yeah, so I would say like, I would send a message out uh, to the society. Like these rare uh, disease patients, they are not that different. They mm. are like as, a, uh, as us. They could be our sisters, our brothers, right. our cousins, our right. parents. Any any loved ones to us could be could be having this rare disease. Mm. So these people shouldn't be discriminated out of the society because they are suffering from this rare disease. Mm. So we would say that uh, like we have we have like a great uh, responsibility for that. So we we should always encourage them uh, and support them for having like to live uh, to live uh, their life and to reach to their goals and aims throughout life and live their life to the best of it. And uh, they should always have like a proper educational access or uh, uh, rights such as us and uh, healthcare and uh, social life. Mm. And that puts our society in a, like a great responsibility for uh, to support and encourage them and to make the outer world uh, for them a better place Yes. and uh, to, to reduce the burden that they are already in. Yes, indeed. Sarah, any last words? Yes, uh, one of the goals of the campaign is to remind the patient themselves that uh, they are unique. So even if they have some disabilities, we know that they are such an inspiration, them and their families, because uh, they are going through many obstacles. Right. But uh, despite that, they are 
they can do great things, but they need some support from the society, and this is the role of all of us. Well, thank you so much. Our sincerest gratitude is revealed to you and to every member of your team for making this happen. Bless you for this. You're most and welcome. Definitely, you'll be saving lives for this campaign. Thank you. Much thank appreciated you. for your efforts. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you so for much. having us. Most definitely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is not only their responsibility, but also ours to pretty much spread awareness when it comes to rare diseases. All that took place right here in an interview on Bahrain Now. Under the patronage of the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council and Vice Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Higher Education, Dr. Sheikh Rana bin Isa bin Adraj Al Khalifa, the final stage of the second edition of the National Research Competition for undergraduate students have been held on the 21st of February 2022. The competition has been organized by the Scientific Research Directorate at the Secretariat General of the Higher Education Council in collaboration with the British Council and the UK Embassy in Bahrain. With nearly 150 male and female students who participated in the Scientific Research Skills Training Program since its launch at the beginning of the academic year. This event aims to prepare our students to be researchers, to train them to be researchers, how to do research, and then to let them express that research in actual projects. So I'd like to thank uh, the British Council and HEC Bahrain for making this possible and for giving our students this opportunity to learn from experts about how to do, to do and conduct research and also to evaluate their works and come up with the best research outputs. We are very excited this year because the last year it was um, uh, conducted virtually. Uh, this competition means a lot for the students who already particip participated in it because um, it comes uh, to support uh, the Bahrain vision for 2030 in terms of research. This year was uh, very special because we've uh, seen a lot of diversified research, especially in the sustainability side. We've seen something related to the smart farming, which is something we believe that Bahrain uh, needs. And uh, 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 we would like to thank also our partners from uh, the British Embassy in Bahrain and the British Council. Today I just won fifth place in the graduation competition here in Bahrain. As an undergraduate here in Bahrain, it's, a, not, it's a, a very new thing for us to conduct a full graduation project. As a fourth year and I'm about to graduate, especially in design, it's really hard to find such competitions that actually take design very seriously and take our graduation project in such a bigger uh, platform. So I was really happy to see such, uh, you know, such competition been held for my uh, design projects to be considered um, worldwide with other like CSI or like uh, other medicine students. We're all in the same level. Well, everyone, I hope you all enjoyed that episode as much as I did. Don't forget to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. And stay tuned for more happenings right here on Bahrain Now. I'm Bara Abdullah. Till next time, Bahrain, goodbye and God bless.